Okay, let's go find Kobe. Because I want to go home. <laughs> hey, bro. Can I borrow you, borrow you for a second? What's up? Uh, can we head home? I think I've just about had all the fun I can have here. Do you mind if we head home? You sure you want to go? I normally go all night, but I'm happy to go whenever you are. You just let me know when you're sure. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's late. I wouldn't mind calling it a night. Fair enough. I appreciate I appreciate you coming tonight. You'll have to tell me about how it went on the way home. It's rowdy in here. It was refreshing to step outside. The bouncer gave us a gentle wave, sharpie in hand as he addressed the next in line. I felt a little bad for pressuring Kobe to leave earlier than he usually would have, but he was all smiles. He was just happy that I came, I suppose. He insisted on driving. Drinking apparently put him off his game. After all the excitement, I barely recall what we talked about on the way home. It just flew by. It's funny. The trip to the club felt like a lifetime. I guess I was more nervous than I should have been. Best not to overthink it. We passed out quickly when we got home, still riding the high of the evening. Ugh, first time I've slept in late for reasons other than being a loafer. Seems like Kobe is already up. Either that or he just dropped me off and went back clubbing? The whole thing still feels kind of surreal. I should check my phone to see if I ended up getting any new contacts or if it was just one of those weird dreams. Okay, uh, tutorial, um, achievement, and contact of Kobe. Oh, someone is calling me. Uh, what now? Uh, diary messages? Mm, we have Kobe's contact and uh, Zenith. Yes, we want to talk to Zenith. Okay, let's call Zenith because he said we shouldn't make him wait too long. Oh, that's a very nice picture. <laughs> Zenith's status says that he's already at the local shooting range. I should ask him if he wants to meet there. Hey, Zenith. Chorus the Otter here, from the other day. See here you're at the range from your pastebook? Wanna, wanna hang out? Hey, good timing. Just got here. Sure, bud. Can do. Gonna be here for, gonna be here a few hours, so may as well have company. You know the address, right? Yeah, I got it. Anyway, your pastebook has a map. Haha, <laughs> quit being a weird stalker and get down here then. It took me around an hour to finally get to the shooting range. I wasn't unfamiliar with it, though traffic in the middle of the day had certainly held me up more than I wanted. Hopefully Zenith wouldn't be too upset with me for being late. I couldn't help but be a little confused by him still. He was very hot and cold at the club, and joining him at the range wasn't exactly anything we'd planned as far as a date or anything like that. I guess I was overthinking things. The range wasn't anything to write home about. It didn't seem to be too busy at this time of day. There was an older guy in a khaki utility vest minding the sign-in book. He thumbed to a sign that read, Valid IDs only. Under it, scratched in Sharpie, was, Guests, use driver's license. Two guests per club member only. This last part was underlined twice. Uh, show my ID. This is my local range too. My ID is old, but look at that. It's still valid. I'll have to use my driver's license, I guess. Okay, so we've been uh, given it clear instructions, so let's use our driver's license. I showed my driver's license and told him that my friend, Zenith, was waiting for me. He seemed to nod, maybe familiar with Zenith or possibly recalling a message Zenith had left when, we got he when he got here. I hoped Zenith wouldn't mind walking me through the basics. Gun stuff wasn't exactly something I knew too much about. I peered around the building, trying to scope him out. I mean, how hard could it be to find a guy his size? I didn't have any luck, but the range wasn't exactly huge. If it was, if he was still here, I'd find him. Uh, what do we do? 
we wait for him, call his name, or look around for him. Okay, kind of weird to wait for him when he's waiting for us, so don't, maybe not that. Uh, calling his name, uh, kind of weird, I think. So let's uh, look around for him. I didn't want to miss him, especially since I was a little late. I started to wander down the right arm of the extended T-shape of the range spaces, checking for him while keeping a respectful distance. I watched a few of the patrons shooting at the targets with a mix of success. With each loud bang, I started to doubt if I'd find Zenith without bumping into him. Even with the required ear protectors, some of the large, larger guns were enough to rattle the wood boards of the floor a little. I was nearly through checking this side with only the percussive company of the strangers before a large hand clapped on my back, startling me a little. Was I spacing out? Or was it just the ear covers? Either way, I had a pretty good idea who'd pat my shoulder with that kind of force. Cars the Otter, you made it. And here I thought you were never gonna show up. Hey, you okay? You don't look so hot. I laughed it off, adjusting my headset where the combination of the jumping and his slap had knocked it wonky. Yeah, you know a guy your size shouldn't go around jumping out at people, right? You pretty much chopped my head off. He laughed with a yeah yeah all in good fun gesture. I finally got a good look at the dragon out from under the ambient lighting and neon of the club. His vest top left very little to the imagination, hugging the solid mountain rage of his abs, not to mention that more of his broad shoulders and thick arms on display was far from the worst either. Uh, keep staring or snap out of it. <laughs> It's our first date, so we shouldn't keep staring, so snap out of it. I threw him a playful smirk and nudged him with my shoulder. Not that I really expected to budge him. Maybe a little warning before you go all urban commando on me. He laughed it off and spoke up before my gutter mind could linger too long on the concept of, concept of him going commando in another way. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Don't know my own strength sometimes. You alright? His earnestness more than made up for it. I nodded as he indicated down to his booth, and we started heading over toward it. I'm fine. Takes a bit more than that to take me out. So, the shooting range, huh? Not my first idea for a place to hang out on a day off. Well, I like to come here to blow off steam, you know. Something cathartic about squeezing off a few rounds. And believe me, after the other night... I couldn't blame the dark cloud that came down over his expression as he recalled the fight with Rose. Yep, been glad to be blowing off some steam after that shit show. You didn't need to see that crap. Not the first time he's done it either. Uh, reassure him, ask about Rose, or dismiss it. Uh, I think let's reassure him. It didn't bother me that much. In fact, it shows what a good person you are for being able to invite me out here even after Rose tried to mess with us both. It doesn't seem like he was treating you any fairer than he was treating me. Well damn, Chorus the Otter. I, uh, thanks. That means a lot. Don't mention it, Zenith. It's the truth, after all. So, are you done shooting, or did you want to keep going a little? Sounds good to me, Chorus the Otter. Over here. I couldn't help but notice the target he had been practicing on. There were multiple holes directly in the center of the target and a couple of dead on shots in the head region. It was impressive and also sort of scary. I guess I knew not to piss the guy off. He was clearly talented. I followed Zenith over to his spot on the range. It looked like he had already been practicing for a while. There was a large boxy pistol on the table. I didn't know the model, but it looked like a police pistol. In the booth, there was a half-empty box of bullets. He had his own earplugs too, which he loosely slipped in. One pistol. I suppose if I was going to shoot two, we'd have to take turns. Alright, let me just empty this clip here, then we'll swap out. Alright, Zenith. Show me what you've got. I watched as the dragon slipped his plugs in. They were the professional ones that hung around the neck in a band. I guess he came here a lot. He picked up the pistol, checked the safety, and stepped up to the mark before switching it to live and aiming. He stood like a pro. He'd mentioned something about cop training, and he seemed to slip back into that role as he concentrated. 
I adjusted my own earmuffs. He peered over to make sure I had done so, and the range was clear before drawing a line down the gun. Shots rang, rang out. One, two, then a quick double. Three, four. So quick the sounds almost blurred together. He flicked the safety on, ejected the empty magazine, and quickly ratchet ratcheted the slide twice. He must have known exactly how many rounds he had left, because I didn't see him pull the trigger dry. Zenith flicked the plugs out of his ears and scoop, scooped out the other spent magazines on the surface into his hand like magic. He admired his handiwork for a moment with a grin. Two solid shots to the head, and the last two laid atop each other in the heart of the blank silhouette. Shit, good shooting. Phew, how'd you like that, eh? Ain't much better shooting than that outside the flashy movie stuff. Uh, compliment, flirt, or boast? Uh, let's compliment first. That was, I mean, damn, four clean shots? You're something else, Zenith. You're too damn cute for your own good, you know that. Keep flattering me like that and I'll have to buy you lunch. Is that a promise? I gave a coy little smirk and put on the most innocent looking face I could muster. He laughed it off a little after dropping me a wink. Mm hmm. You'll just have to find out, won't you? But we'll talk about lunch later. So, you ever fire one of these before? Uh, not really, no. Or from time to time, yeah. I think uh, our character isn't that much of a shooter, so not really, no. Nah, I've never really touched one. I wouldn't know the first thing, really. Hey, don't sweat it. I'll show you how to use my pistol here. First things first. Safety is the number one priority. These new models have a ton of safety features. But first thing you want to do is... And there we stood. Zenith showed me the ins and outs of how to use his firearm. He took his time and explained everything simply, starting with how to ha safely handle the weapon, and the safety before moving on to the other features. He felt like a proper teacher, also, and also like he'd either done this before, or certainly knew his stuff. He must seriously love guns. He went over how to reload, how to stand properly, and even some tips on how to aim. The best part was how close he was. He really got into showing me the proper posture, his muscular chest up against my back and snout on my shoulder to check my sights. I felt like I might melt against him, but I contained myself. He smelled like that manly clove body wash with the horse guy in the advertisements. Before the embrace could drive me to a response or get too distracting to listen to his advice, he nodded and stepped back away. So, did you get all that? There's nothing you're still unsure about. If you go over it again, does that mean we get to cuddle up all close again? I mean, that was for the sake of showing you how to properly aim. But maybe, let's see how you shoot first. Ha, <laughs> don't worry. I'm just messing with you. So is there anything else I need to know? Or do I just have at it? You should be good. Show me how it's done, chorus the other. You've got a real pro for a teacher, so I expect nothing but perfection. Oh, we're gonna actually shoot. Uh, press space R or mouse to reload and begin. Uh, space. Oh, come on. Let's go. Oh, reload. Oh, I forgot to reload. I'm sorry. Uh, how long is this going to go on? I keep forgetting to reload. Time up. Game over. Okay. Boom. Headshot achievement. <laughs> uh, enter to retry or escape to continue. So I think that was good. <laughs> Maybe. Let's continue. Ah oh, damn, not bad, not bad. That's pretty impressive. But then again, you did have me teaching you. I snickered and blew the barrel of the gun like I saw in the movies, despite the lack of any smoke. 
Still, the rush of shooting was even better with him here. Zenith had that silly toothy grin plastered to his face again, obviously impressed beyond his playful self-compliment. Hell, I might not have had the same speed he did, but I had a feeling I'd be coming out here a lot more frequently if I would be like this every time. So, I've been meaning to ask, how did you get to so good with that pistol anyway? Oh, well, just a lot of practice, I guess. He had that look like he'd just seen a ghost again. He was definitely hiding something. He'd mentioned something about official training back at the club, but did it go beyond that? Uh, press the issue or leave it be. Uh, I think last time we didn't press it. And uh, it's just, you know, our first, uh, like, hangout. So I don't think we should be pressing it. So let's leave it be. I'm sorry. It seems like that is an awkward topic. We can forget I even asked and get back to having fun. Okay? Look, it's not like I don't trust you or anything. It's just, it's not something I want to talk about. Thanks for understanding. It's fine, Zenith. We came out here to blow off steam. Remember? Let's get back to it. For the time being, maybe it was best to leave it be. It didn't take long for him to compose himself again. Whatever it was, it seemed like it was maybe a little bigger than our unofficial first date. Sorry, chorused the other. Must have been the adrenaline getting me all riled up. When I get back to it, you got to go through all the clips. It's my turn to show you what I can do with more than four bullets. I nodded and let the topic go. We were just getting ready to get back to firing off some more rounds when I heard a soft voice behind me. Uh, Zenith? Is that really you? I can't believe it. I haven't seen you in years. The soft voice belonged to someone I didn't know. The young-looking deer headed over our way. Zenith's eyes widened at the sight of him, though I got the impression the emotion behind them was mixed. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words seemed to come out. Uh, introduce myself, wait for Zenith, or tell him off. Uh, I think let's wait for Zenith. I figured it would be polite to wait for Zenith to introduce me to his friend. I waited, and waited. Zenith just seemed to stand there dumbfounded. Jason? Jason Dartson? Well, I'll be damned. I don't believe it. Zenith seemed in shock. Jason laughed nervously and gave a winning smile. Still as humble as I remember. And you must be a friend of Zenith's. Well, any friend of his is definitely a friend of mine. The deer's inward smile was matched by a blush as he tried to hide it by turning away. Zenith is more than just a friend, actually. More than a friend? Uh, let the truth come out or ask about it. Are they dating? Uh... It's not good to assume, so let's let the truth come out. You must have known each other for a long time. I'd say best friends? It doesn't seem like you're the same age for school friends. No, actually, we only briefly met in the hospital. Zenith is more than a friend because he's a hero, as far as I'm concerned. A hero? What do you mean? Um, Zenith? Zenith fidgeted nervously as I spoke to Jason, but he didn't say anything. All I could do was stand back and hope they'd shed some light on this. Jason, I... Well, Zenith saved my, saved my life a few years ago. What? He saved your life? What happened? I mean, if you don't mind me asking... It was nothing. It was nothing, really. I was just doing my job, you know. Don't listen to him. He's too modest and a big softy under all those muscles. A few years back, I got into a car accident. A pretty serious one. A T-bone at an intersection. I'll spare you the details, but I was pinned underneath my car and needed help quick. My belt had choked me unconscious from where the frame got all buckled. I was silent as I listened to Jason. Zenith was looking away as much as he could without being rude. The story seemed to be making him uncomfortable, but I couldn't exactly tell the guy to stop telling his life-altering story. I was in a really bad shape. The ambulance with the jaws of life didn't get there until about five minutes later, I was told. The car was leaking fuel and was going to... Well, to be honest, I should have died there that night. 
The next thing I remember was waking up next to a handsome police officer in a hospital bed. Heh, <laughs> I wasn't that handsome. I was shaking like a leaf. Hush, you. See, Zenith happened to be on patrol nearby when I got into my accident. He tore into the car to pry me out before the fire could get to me. Zenith, is that true? That's incredible! The tall man couldn't bring himself to look at either of us, though there was the hint of a blush rising on his stoic features. Mm hmm it's all true. He performed the CPR and made sure I got to the hospital in one piece. He sat at my bedside all night, even if he didn't realize I was awake. My throat was hurt, and at the time I didn't know if I'd ever be able to speak again. So I was never able to say thank you properly. You don't have to do that. Jason, you already sent a thank you card to the department the next day. I still have it, even. I was just doing my job. Anyone would have done it. Jason didn't give him any time to react. In an instant, his arms wrapped around his toned midsection in, an, in a warm embrace. Zenith seemed uncomfortable, but maybe this was my chance to learn more about him? Uh, encourage Zenith or suggest Jason stops. Uh... You know, it's kind of weird to tell someone to stop hugging someone out of the blue. So let's encourage Zenith, maybe. Zenith looked over to me and our eyes caught, on, caught one another's. No words were needed. I simply smiled warmly and nodded whatever consent there was for me to give. Zenith wrapped his large arms around Jason, pulling him in close. Jason peered up at Zenith as a little tear rolled down his cheeks, enjoying the moment until he finally pulled away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zenith. After Jason pulled away, Zenith gave a brief smile, but he was obviously gritting his teeth. Something was definitely wrong, and Jason noticed it. He quickly clapped the hand over his mouth as if he could as if he could take back the whole thing. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. Hey, don't worry about it, okay? I'm just glad you're doing all right, Jason. Oh hey, here. For you. The deer reached into his backpack to pull out a large bouquet of white lilies. They seemed very fresh. I heard around town that you went to the gun range here a lot. I caught your message on Facebook about heading out here, so I got these for you. Please, take them, and I'm sorry for getting carried away there. He handed over the flowers, which Zenith took with a reluctance that seemed almost like he might be allergic. They shared one last platonic hug before Jason bowed out of the conversation, taking a step back towards the entrance. I'm glad I was able to see you again, Zenith. I don't want to interrupt your day out, though. It was nice meeting you as well, Cars the Otter. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Yeah, you take care, Jason. Thanks for the flowers. Zenith and I stood there for a moment, both of us looking at the bouquet of flowers like we had never seen one before. The silence was thick, but it was Zenith who finally broke through it. So, guess there ain't no hiding it now, huh? Cat's out of the bag. Why would you hide that, though? You saved someone's life. That's pretty amazing, Zenith. I've got my reasons. It just hurts to remember some things, you know. Good days are all well and good. There is plenty of bad ones too. Ask about being a cop or ask about ask about the incident Jason mentioned or Rose. Um kinda weird to mention Rose. Uh, maybe the incident Jason mentioned first because he doesn't want to talk about being a cop yet. Like the incident that Jason brought up, did he get you those flowers because of saving him or did something else happen? Zenith set the flowers down, a smile finally returning to his face. He wrapped an arm around my shoulder, pulling me close before he spoke. Tell you what, Chorus the Otter, it's been a long time since I've been able to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with someone like this. It's nice. Listen, I'm tired of hiding out here, even if I'm not usually one to open up and shit. I'm tired of running from this crappy stuff, but it's nice to do something normal for once. Tell you what. We'll get into all these questions, those questions, just not in the middle of the range, yeah? Next day, we'll do something relaxing and get all this shit out in the open, yeah? He peered up at Zenith, dwarfed by the size of him. Despite that, I felt relaxed against him already. I guess that wasn't quite the situation he was talking about. Protected? 
maybe? That was a better word for how he made me feel. Somewhere we could go to relax and not be bothered by people. I had it. A picnic. Did I really just blurt that out? Picnic? Not the smoothest transition, but with him leaning in so close, there was only so much platonic hugging I could take today before the urge welled up to kiss or nudge snouts with him. You heard me. A picnic. You said you wanted to do something nice? Let's have a picnic. I sort of figure we might have had our range day crashed enough for today, and I suppose you should get those flowers in water before they go bad. He burst into laughter, squeezing me close in a half-hug, half-headlock before letting me go. A picnic? I guess we can't have guns and ammo for every day. Just a little girly. Nothing wrong with that. Just trying to work you out, is all. He's kidding, right? He can't work me out? A picnic? You know, that sounds amazing. I could go for a picnic with you, chorus the otter. We can talk about whatever you want. You want to know about my past? Fine. I'll fill you in. Awesome. Okay, then it's a date. I'll give you a call when I've got a free afternoon and the weather is looking okay, yeah? Sure thing. Hey, you need a ride home? I've got to pack this stuff up first. I'd love to, but I've got my car with me. Did you want a carpool next time, at least? Sure, just don't pack too many sandwiches. Otherwise, you'll get stranded out there while I sleep them off. I'll see you later, Zenith. Text me with some food ideas, okay? We left things at a cordial but slightly overlong hug and a smile that said we'd both enjoyed ourselves despite the interruption. I guess I can't blame him for holding off on the serious questions until our next date, especially not to spoil the tenuous mood after Jason stopped by. Somewhere along the ride home, I started to wonder. Had I called it a date first, or had Zenith? The mutual agreement that it was indeed a date had its own excitement to it, like some semi-formal agreement. I guess we'd see what his answers to some of my questions were first. Okay, uh, unlock the achievement, testing the waters. Okay, 